But yeah, wine is like one of my favorite things. Rosés. Rosés are nice. They're uh-huh. sweet. I don't even know if they're at like rosés actually made of grapes. I mean, it's but... wine, so it's all? Yeah, but this is a raspberry rosé. Oh, so you actually you know, might like... be drinking raspberry wine. Is that a thing? I don't... Yeah, yeah it is. There's different kinds mm-hmm. of wine. There's like plum mm-hmm. wine from yeah. Japan. That's pretty good, mm-hmm. honestly. There's... I guess technically if you boil down to it, sake is just a rice wine. That would make like There's tequila a warm wine? Yes. I don't like that. Yeah. Let's vodka's potato, potato wine. wine. Oh no. Wait, what? <laughs> how did we get here? We need to abort. Let's go back. So Dionysus. Welcome, mortals, monsters, and myth lovers alike. You're listening to Podcast of Poseidon, where we explore ancient myths and their modern retellings by reading Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympians. This is Chapter 4, Dionysus. I'm your co-host, on loan from the Hunters of Artemis, Darian Smart. Joining me is my co-host and brother, hailing from Cabin 14, DJ. Cabin 14, for those of you who don't know, is Iris, goddess of rainbows and the Iris messages they use throughout Percy Jackson. Which is pretty much just a Skype. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we're going to do a full episode on Iris or if she's just going to get a bonus episode. It honestly depends on how much, like, there is to dig into. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to, I'll have to, like, we'll have to do a little more research into mm-hmm. Iris. Because, like, all she's really used for is just the messages. And- and again, it's a Skype call. And it's call. just a Skype call because we couldn't give them technology because that would make it really easy to solve problems. So let's invent oh, a reason yeah. why the, the kids can't have cell phones. In even 2005, they were, you were getting tech. And it's because, yeah. you know, Greek monsters are really, really attracted to data plans. Yeah, apparently. But we're not talking about Iris, we're not talking about monsters, we're not even talking about cell phones, we're talking about Dionysus! Woo! Woo. DJ, what do you know about Dionysus? God of wine, Mm -hmm. of parties, Mm -hmm. I want to say he's like Lord of the Satyrs, but I don't quite know, I know that's just kind of how he's portrayed in the books, he's kind of their boss, Mm -hmm. so I don't know if that's truly the dealio, and I... there's I, there's not much more I know about him. He's he's like and he's portrayed wildly differently across all mediums I've ever seen. Yeah, exactly. That's basically what this episode is going to be about. But yeah, DJ, <laughs> you really did. You hit the the big points. You hit the points that most people, I think, with even like a passing knowledge of Greek mythology, would would hit about Dionysus. He is the party god. He's the god of wine. That kind of thing. Speaking of wine, I'm enjoying a lovely raspberry rosé right Ooh. now by our by our Idaho's very own Saint Chapelle. Are, are we just doing plugs for for local vineyards? No, <laughs> no, I'm I mean, here for it. I'm super into that. Yeah, we... I love wine. I, like I'm gonna be real, like with everyone here. I, I didn't love know wine. that My alcohol. Oh, wine's great, mainly because I have a really big thing for grapes. Grape flavored anything. It just, just hits me. You know, grape soda, grape gummies, grape fucking Jolly Ranchers. So you're really bummed out that we can't have grape ice cream then? Oh, I'm super bummed out about that. I did research into that to like understand why isn't there uh-huh. a grape ice cream. There's so many different... Grapes do not freeze Mm-mm. properly. They become like a slush yeah, yeah. rather than like an actual frozen thing. And I was like super bummed out about that when I first figured out. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> Stupid laws of physics. <laughs> you know? <laughs> laws of fruit. I mean, just straight up. I didn't know you had this deep love of wines. This is very exciting. I couldn't tell you what wines are, like, really good or anything. I just like the flavor of wine. I think that's important. Just if you like the wine. That's that's what Bosnia did. I like Moscow Mules with flavored vodka. (laughs) And that's, like, it for me, really. And Malibu. Ooh, and Jello shots. Let's get back on topic. So Dionysus. (laughs) Here, Here are some fun facts about Dionysus. Dionysus is the son of Zeus, king of the gods. Yep. And as as generally, as generally the many are, of the yep son yep of Zeus, uh, children of Zeus. Yep. And I want to say her name is Semele. Let's see. 
Dionysus Mother. Where is Wikipedia? Because they have, like, how to pronounce it. Sem- Semili, yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's three different E's in that, and all three are pronounced differently. Well, I guess it's like... It said, like, the first E is pronounced like the E in dress. So, Semili. Okay. Emily with an S at the front of it. So, Zeus and Simile. And now, DJ, do you want to guess what Simile is the goddess of? Uh, why do I have to guess when I have... No, a... no, no! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> I actually can't find it, so I have no idea. <laughs> Being drunk, maybe? Like... <laughs> it was a trick question. She wasn't a goddess. Nor was she... I an... figured because I couldn't find it. <laughs> so... So Semele was actually a human princess of Thebes, which makes Dionysus the only Ooh, hell yeah, yeah. Let's go. Dionysus is the only god whose parents weren't both gods themselves. Now, why does Dionysus hold this special place above any other demigods, basically? Because he partied hard with Zeus. Kinda, but it does boil down <laughs> to Hera being Hera. You know, Zeus is showing up, hanging out with Simile. Simile's pregnant. Hera finds out. She's pissed. Fair. Not the fair part is that Hera goes down and tricks Simile. He's like, oh, hey, Zeus promised you any favor at all. He would do anything you asked for, right? Oh, you should totally ask to see his true divine form. Just, he'll, he'll definitely, if if he really is committed yeah. to you, he'll, he'll do it. So Simile asks, hey, I want to see your godly form. And Zeus, who swore an oath to her, was like, fuck. And reveals himself, and Simile burns up, be- vaporizes. vaporizes like mortals. mortals cannot conceive of this level of divinity, essentially. Yeah. But for some reason, the fetus that Simile was carrying at the time survives this a little bit. So... Zeus hides the fetus just in his thigh. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Thigh, thigh baby. baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how Dionysus finished cooking and was born. And then to continue hiding him from Hera, he, he being Zeus, sent baby Dionysus to be raised by nymphs in this, like, this really kick-ass valley. Just this, it's called, like, mm, so that's, Nyssa. I guess I would explain this whole relationship with Seder. Yeah, yeah. So he hits, that's where he's hanging out. And that's why Dionysus wasn't just another demigod who had to run errands and do quests. He was a god. And when he grew up, he decided he wanted to, you know, travel the world. And a quote from Edith Hamilton's mythology, teach men the culture of grapes. So he gave them... The culture of Yeah, grapes. he gave them, like, this is how grapes Let's work. Go. Vineyards and, and here's how you make wine and all that good stuff. He also just straight up started a cult for himself. I yeah, so he's just going around getting folks to like, hey, do you want to worship me? And folks were like, yeah, I do. You seem cool, you seem man. Cool. I mean, let's party. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I li- my name is Dionysus, and I like to party. <laughs> <laughs> well, my name's <laughs> my name's Theseus, and I like to party. No, Theseus, I'm the only one who likes to party in this situation. <laughs> well, I- well, <laughs> I'm Jason, and I like to party. Jason, we discussed this. <laughs> I'm the only one of the group who likes to party. <laughs> so, so here's fun fact. So the episode is going to be named My Name is Dionysus and I Like to Party. And, <laughs> and here's, here's another fun fact. It's not because of that. It's because my friend Skylar, she helped me brainstorm the later part of the episode, specifically said, please name the episode that. And I was like, babe, for you, anything. So yeah. I'm saying it now uh, to, so everyone knows that that was great. And I love that. And also... <laughs> Complete coincidence. This is great. Skylar's going to be so happy. Also, shout out to Skylar. She's been so supportive. This is the first episode we've recorded <laughs> since the podcast has come out and is now a real podcast yeah. that exists for people to listen to. She's awesome. Thank you, Skylar, and everybody mm-hmm. else who's listened. So there are some people out there that would get that reference. I just did the introduction of the group from Hot oh, no, 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 no. to the girl. We don't have to tell people. They get it or they don't get it. I'm going to tell people. Some people are going to get it. And uh, reason being, because I want to plug that movie. That movie's <laughs> great. It's hilarious. It's got Andy Samberg. <laughs> you know what? Actually, that's... It's a funny as shit movie. <laughs> that's fair. Because some feedback I have gotten was from Skylar. Listening to the first episode. Day it came out because she's amazing. A text. I don't know what Smite is. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some of these things we talk about maybe aren't like... 
zeitgeist cultural touchdowns, so we should, like, explain oh, yeah. what the hell Which, Smite is. Wait, what is uh, Gravity Falls? Dionysus, Sorry. Yeah, Dionysus may not be in Smite, but his Roman counterpart, Bacchus, Ooh. is. Mm-hmm. He's a guardian, so he's a tank, and he's kind of fun. Interesting. Anyway. <laughs> See, I would have... Tank is really interesting, and I'm going to tell you why, because we're getting to the next part, because Dionysus, not just the god of wine and parties, is also associated with madness, as in, like, driving men yeah. mad. He doesn't... De- they don't delve into that in Smite, mm-hmm. but he's <laughs> he's got an ability where he... It's called Chug, <laughs> and so he chugs his wine, and he gets progressively more drunk through the game, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he gets, like, protections and shit, and, like, uh, healing from that. And he also, like, his ultimate, he smashes his wine bottle on the ground and explodes nice, yeah. mm-hmm. and makes enemies around him take damage and just drunk for a bit. Oh, that's awesome. Which is really okay, cool. Okay, that is really cool. Yeah. There's actually a couple really cool myths. I mean, there's a lot of really cool myths in Greek mythology. That's what this podcast is about. Yeah. But Dionysus has several. And I, like, when doing, like, the backstory lore of this one, I try not to get, like, here's all of it because this, our podcast is more yeah. about the reimaginings. But I think I really like Dionysus more than I realized I did. Because, oh, like, I here's, it. I'm just going to speed run through my points in my notes here. All right. So another thing that happened to Dionysus. So he's traveling around, dressed super fancy, is probably super hot. So he gets kidnapped by pirates who think he's just, like, some rich prince and they're going to hold him for ransom. And when they try to tie him up, the ropes don't tie him. And, like, one guy on the ship looks around and he tells his bros, like, this guy is clearly a god. We need to let him go. And the captain's like, you're an idiot. We're going to throw him into the sea, like, fuck this shit. And then all hell breaks loose, and, like, Dionysus drives them mad and, like, turns these dudes into dolphins. And just, like, yeah. yeah. Except for the one guy who knew he was a god and (laughs) told him knew. He's like, you can go home now. You probably shouldn't fuck with this guy. You're fired. Yep. Uh, (laughs) Another awesome Dionysus thing is that so Dionysus meets this woman named Ariadne who was abandoned on an island by the hero Theseus who appeared in our last episode about the Minotaur. I think Theseus might suck also but we'll dive into that later. We'll get, we'll anyway, get that. So oh, Dionysus yeah. rescues her from the island. They hang out. They fall in love. Of course she is mortal but when she dies Dionysus takes her crown and puts it in the stars as a constellation which is like really yeah. sweet because most people who get constellations, like, died, and it was usually, like, the gods' fault. And a lot of times they were, like, heroes. Yeah, too, heroes, yeah. You know, it's, it's... But this one, it was just, like, a very, like, sweet memorial for her. I yeah. do. Dionysus mentions her in Percy Jackson later on when he talks a about... Couple, yeah, he... When he tells, like, Percy, he's like, this is why I don't like heroes. I want to say it was Battle of the Labyrinth. I think four, yeah, three or four is when we start getting a lot of... The yeah, Greek heroes kind of suck. Titans or battle. Mm-hmm. I mean, then like at the same uh, while we're realizing Greek heroes sucked, we're also realizing the gods kind of sucked. Yeah, so that's that's funny. And then and then Percy just says super jaded. Fair, fair. <laughs> Percy's yeah. The, the books are the gradual ascent of Percy into jadedness. Yeah. Another cool thing about Dionysus is that, of course, he never met his mother because she died literally before he was born. Yeah. So at one point, he just goes to the underworld. And gets her, and then brings her to live on Mount Olympus. Sounds like something that that madman would he do. Just he just does that. He just does that. Oh, I want to know the conversation between him and Hades, you know? That's a good point. It's like, hey man, Hera killed my mom, and Hades like, say no say more. Say no more. <laughs> so speaking of Hades, <laughs> here, here's something that I kept finding in my research about Dionysus, because obviously, you know, wine and all that kind of thing but one since we're talking about hades another interesting thing about dionysus is that in another version of of his origin story i think it's an orphic one of the orphitic myths he was the child of zeus and persephone Ooh. Mm-hmm. and when he was born hera had some evil titans rip him apart and eat him and yeah. then zeus went and got him and then that's how he came back as a god yeah i mean i mean yeah it seems like something Hera would do she's very spiteful no she can't do anything to a guy who's actually hurting her as zeus so she takes it out on the people who don't have any power in the situation which is not a healthy or good approach <laughs> no it's not it's she needs like, zeus is therapy, one who's been the jackass maybe here. talk to hermes but you know it's they need couples counseling but god no gods know that they'll never fucking they'll never get, fucking get know? it never. there's no god of counseling so, <laughs> know, we should right? davis we should there's find a... the god of counseling 
Let's, as we're Wouldn't going forward, okay, like, find who could have been the god of counseling. Was it Iris? Uh, from... She's all about communication. <laughs> right. No, it was Iris. Right. She's the god. She's the goddess of counseling. It's all right about communication. Right now, if it, like it, it'd either be Iris or Nemesis. <gasps> Mm, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what? Bonus episode, maybe. Who is the goddess of counseling? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So with these two myths about Dionysus, you know, going to the underworld and coming back, he's also associated with death and rebirth. And in a way that Persephone isn't, which is surprising, but being Persephone, she's like, you know, the spring goddess, and she goes down to the underworld in the winter, and she comes back, and she's very much that cycle. But in her myths and lore, they, the Greeks really thought of her as still being, like, very changed from her time in the underworld. Like, she is the queen of the underworld when she returns. Oh, yeah. She's not that maiden of spring like she was, even when she comes back. Dionysus is still Dionysus. He's still that He's guy, dying. even after this cycle. Because, like, obviously, yeah. like, grapes also need to be, like, trimmed back, and they die in the winter, and then they, you know, are the, the vines go into hibernation. Yeah, but and they come they're, back. like, winter parties. Yeah, and, and like, it, it comes back. People are still going mad because they're locked in because it's fucking cold outside. They can't do anything unless they die of hypothermia, you know? And I guess, you, like, if you boil it down, hypothermia could also be a type of madness. True. Because suddenly, you're really warm, and that's all in your mind. That's true. And so you take off your clothes and die of hypothermia. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, gosh, that's very upsetting, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I also want to talk about, while we're still here, the the main ads, who were Dionysus' followers. They traveled with him. They worshipped in wild places. They bathed in... Mean ads. Mean ads. Okay. The mean, thank you, DJ. The mean ads. So... But basically, these were women who were described as being frenzied with wine. They were so taken with it that they would literally, like, rip men apart. This is how Orpheus dies. Alcoholics. <laughs> so, uh, honestly, I- It's alcoholism that just also You're- got combined with kleptomania. So, no, that's, no, seriously, though, it sounds like one of those, like, dare, like, Drugs are scary, like, courses they would have taught us in, like, fifth grade about, like, wine. Here's all the drugs. Here's all the lingo. Goodbye. <laughs> I was like, if you drink wine, you'll tear musicians to shreds. But, like, honestly, they really do sound like they'd just kind of be wine ants. Especially when you consider, like, they bathe in the brook, so they try. Like, these women were, were kind of just wine yeah, ants. They just, they're just vibing, they just, and they just like wine. They just like wine. I don't see a problem with that. Yeah, but it was the wine that that whole like being like the god of the vine that is why Dionysus was so like he had the party and the revelry and the fun and also the madness and the chaos and losing control because like like you're saying like alcohol it does that a little bit of it if you are in you can still have that fun moment you can still like enjoy not to say you have to have alcohol it's a nice fun. couple of mixed drinks you know but when you start getting like if, straight what, shots of liquor that you're just constantly fucking drinking out of the bottle that's madness it, yeah it's that control <laughs> it's like who is in control are you in control of your consumption of the wine or the alcohol and then you're probably just vibing and you're having fun and it's you're good or is this controlling you and that's when we start to see things that aren't so good anymore that's when we start to have the madness that's when we start to have you know murdering the king of thieves but yeah one last thing that we need to talk about dionysus especially you and i need to talk about is that he's also the god of theater (laughs) yeah yeah that's right i forgot about that i don't know how i forgot about that but yeah yeah theater kid here yeah forgets that he's the god of theater Theater kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another thing. I would say at one point in time, you and I both were patrons of Dionysus oh, yeah, absolutely. or followers of oh, yeah. Dionysus. 100%. Yep, yep. Both theater kids. <laughs> Was I fucking loved being on that stage, it's so and fun. now I just don't have the fucking time for it. It's great. I know. Yeah, we were gonna audition for like stagecoaches thing. Remember yeah. the time travel one? Yeah. There, there is Dionysus. He's very much. I think all you could say all gods like contain multitudes and have these various aspects, but I think Dionysus is the one who contains so many that we do not see represented in in pop culture. Oh, love this oh yeah, very much at all. Most of the time, it's just like partying and theater. Honestly, like partying, mm-hmm. wine, and theater. Because like now that you mention it, yeah, he's there's a lot that's going on with theater that Dionysus is like mentioned at least. So Sometimes, but way more than he is with Matt. I think, I, yeah, with that, I would say Dionysus is, like, mentioned for theater. If you're having something about the theater, someone might mention Dionysus. But I don't, even there, I don't think I can think yeah, of anything. It's not, it's, He yeah. has appeared in regarding theater. 
Like that I've it's seen. It's not a widely yeah. yes. It's not widely regarded. Yeah, he's he's definitely more of like oh yeah, he's the god of god parties. of parties. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really it. So when I was looking, up, okay, let me think real quick. So spoilers for mild spoilers for Lost Girl Magicians. This is gonna sound weird. Alice in Wonderland, Harry Potter, The Great Gatsby, Pride and Prejudice, and Project X, and then a little yeah. bit The Good Place. I haven't. Oh shoot. What'd you do? Is is uh, I'm actually trying to watch Good Place. I just haven't had like the no. time because Emily also wants to watch. Well, no, it. it's good. So, is it like at the start? Okay, no. Well, so we'll get to, we'll get to the Good Place. <laughs> I just it occurred to me <laughs> okay. that in the Fates episode we mentioned a bunch of different things and like maybe. Oh uh, yeah, and we, we totally, totally forgot. So I just think like I'm just gonna I don't know anybody's like comfort level with like they don't want to know anything about it. They want to know a little bit about it. They, so. So yeah. going forward, when we get to this part where we talk about the pop culture, I'm just going to list, like, here's all the stuff I'm going to talk about. It's also going to be in our uh, episode description, along with any content warnings. So okay. that's a good place. Wonderful. So, yeah, it's so rare, I think, to find representation of Dionysus that explore one more than one facet oh, of his personality. There, when I was doing some research, there were, like, two that do very similar things when he he's appeared in some, like, more prominent stuff. Like, Lost Girl which was a like Canadian sci-fi show about kind of like yeah, sci-fi fantasy. Yeah. One. I think the main character was a succubus and it played fast and loose with any sort of like mythology that pulled from, for example, Dionysus himself wasn't in it, but there was a Fae who was a, I believe Bacchus type. Bacchus. Bacchus. Thank you. A Bacchus type Fae who had like a sex club. And that was his whole thing oh, was like yeah. party and sex. And his name was like Roman and stuff. He only appeared yeah. in like one episode. Uh, we see him again in The Magicians, where I think he is Bacchus. And he's just like a party frat boy who's like, if you bring down the party, I'm going to kick you out. I mean, fair. Uh, one area that I've seen him in that I think does a, mm, a good job of at least touching with the fact that this like Dionysus ha- contains is more than just the party god is the Image comic book series, The Wicked, The Divine, which I have right here. And it's yeah. awesome. If you haven't, it's so hard to explain. It's essentially about, here's the back of the, the volume I've got. Every 90 years, 12 gods return as young people. They are loved. They are hated. In two years, they're all dead. It's happening now. It's happening again. Yeah. One of the 12 who are in this cycle that this particular, that this book covers is Dionysus. And he, yep. He's fucking crazy. He is. Like that, I, I read that one, at least that issue you were holding. Oh, yeah. So you've, you've seen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've yeah, seen that. It's, fucking it's great. So they, they show. That part is sick. Yeah. They show Dionysus and like even just any sort of like visual cues, like his eyes are different. His speech bubbles are like neon and stuff. He creates like a hive mind of party where everybody is in this moment together. It actually is. It's really cool. But other things that are cool about it is like the kind of main character, Laura, she's going into like one of his parties. He's like a, a EDM musician, basically. Yeah. And she's like worried about going. She's like this. You people lose control. And he's like very much like, OK, hey, anything that happens is like you can stop it if you want. You don't have to come in. When you're done, it's over. Like, very much like you have to give your consent here. And if you don't want anything, yeah. it's so I like that. I like the the idea of like party and revelry does not justify not giving somebody else, like not respecting someone else's the will choice. and consent. Yeah. Because yeah. even if the whole madness thing is like losing control and that kind of thing, it it's nice. It's important to remember that that's still there. So even if somebody is taken by madness, even if they have lost control, mm-hmm. that doesn't justify anybody else taking away their free will yeah. oh dionysus in this he's actually ace so i thought that was there really cool and because i'm also ace so i you don't get to see cool representations of ace folks who aren't like super buttoned up and like very serious like here's the party god who is also ace but still wants to have fun and that's nice for me and other people who like fun rep okay but another cool yeah. thing this one does is it does touch on his dionysus is like madness a little bit because he's like has this hive mind and partying like when people are in this moment there's like they're partying and like th- going out and it's all like colorful and crazy there's no music playing like it's all in their heads that they're sharing together so that experience yeah. is very cool but later on when Laura is talking to Dionysus about like what he does and how he makes people happy and like wow you got a really good 
because they, they don't get to decide what these are like normal like 20 somethings yeah, these are normal people are no, they, like and then suddenly they're gods the and they don't get to god. choose what god that they get to be which is like a whole thing I and mean, it's completely random gods every yeah time, yeah it's, it's a huge it's, it's like some yeah. yeah which we should actually we'll do probably like a whole remyth episode about the wicked and divine because this is really great but anyway so she's talking to him about like oh like you know you you made people happy and you got the best hand and he's like hey listen um i haven't been alone in my head for two months which two months ago was when he became dionysus and he's like and i don't ever sleep and that's when you suddenly see his eyes for what they are and they're like bloodshot and so there is that madness there he is like within probably losing control because he doesn't have yeah. it so that's cool that it shows like kind of that the the the, yeah, the more yeah, facets of his personality and um in uh in hades the roguelike game mm-hmm. where you play as the zagreus the son of hades mm-hmm. Dionysus shows up, obviously, because all the tw- all the Olympians show up and give you blessings and shit. Mm-hmm. And his is like, honestly, my favorite blessings to get because they can be like really fucking good. Because you can either get it to where your basic attack or just like attacks in general can do what they call hangover, mm-hmm. and it's just poison damage. And you can stack it up to like five times, and you can increase that damage, and it's just really good. Or you can get it to where it's like madness and the enemies are fucking stunned for a couple of seconds Ooh, okay. because they've gone mad and they don't know what the hell's going on. It's great. I love it. So yeah, we're definitely going to do a whole episode about Hades, the game. Hades, is, that game is so much fun. I need to play it. I need to beat it. I've put like 20, 30 hours in that and I haven't even beat it yet. It's Hades is hard, okay? He's the final boss. Spoilers, I guess. Yeah, okay, but spoilers he's... for Hades also. Damn, okay. <laughs> yeah. Hades, he's the final boss. Because mm-hmm. like, I mean, he's trying to stop you from getting out of the underworld. I won't go much further than that into the story because it's fucking stellar. Mm-hmm. And I highly recommend to anyone who hasn't even picked it up. It's a $20 game on Steam. Mm -hmm. And on the Switch, I think it's like $25. Yeah, Lucy's playing on Switch. Uh, We are going to do an episode where we talk about Hades and Assassin's Creed Odyssey together. And how they do the Underworld. Yeah, But yeah, it's a phenomenal game. And I haven't beat it yet because I'm just not good at the game, okay? Don't bully me in the comments (laughs) section. (laughs) Well, I'm sure. But we're recording this like before Halloween. This is set to come out like in late november know, like so like november. you'll have it's fine it's fine so i know right i'll, I'll like i'll put out I'll, I'll put an update on twitter as to whether or not i've beat the perfect game. yeah yeah do that i'll send you the <laughs> calendar when this episode should come out oh that'll just be the caption when it comes out i'm like did, did, did you finish they need to know <laughs> so here okay so so like yeah so it's it's so we see the, the partying, that's usually the go-to. If you're going to put Dionysus in, like, a modern thing, party god, drinks, wine, madness there. Yeah. Madness is a little bit more. We see that sometimes. We don't see the whole, like, theater, the, that, that it's art, that it's creating that thing a lot. And I yeah. found a really great example of that, of, like, kind of blending that facet of Dionysus in a really unexpected place. Oh, I believe it. There's a lot of times it's like, really? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the K-pop group, BTS, has a song called Dionysus. Really? (laughs) And I am just going to quote this directly from the Wikipedia article because it it explains this. Why? So the naming of the song comes from the association of the namesake with debauchery and excess. And this is reflected in the lyrics about getting drunk on art. Because it plays on the Korean words for alcohol and art, which are very, very similar, and also Ooh. words that I cannot pronounce because I uh, dropped that <laughs> Korean. Duolingo Korean course after three months. So, yeah, fair. I should really pick it up. We were supposed to go to Korea and Japan, and then COVID happened, so I got depressed. The whole thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but, but so, so more than just the debauchery, it also plays with expressions about. You know, stardom and legacy and artistic integrity. The band's leader, RM, in a press release, described the song as the joy and pain of creating something and as an honest track, which I think anybody who creates any work of art, be it like actor on stage, directors, writers, game developers, like anybody who creates anything knows that it is, even this podcast, Yeah, it's you know hard. that it's wonderful to put your heart into something and to make it and to see it become more than Mm -hmm. just that thing in your head but also 
it's so painful and it's so scary and making anything is like putting a piece of yourself out there and having to be like exposing and honest and that's painful so i think that's a really cool approach to take with dionysus and what he as a god and as a concept means to artists beyond just the stage and any creator really yeah i mean yeah i like i put when doing when doing theater it was all or nothing honestly (laughs) And I put a lot of heart and soul into the characters I played, even when it was just like, there wasn't much character to do, Mm -hmm. but it was just so much fun. And I think, honestly, my favorite role I've ever done in theater, and the one I put like most work into, was I did, what the fuck was the name of that play? It was Yes, Virginia something, There is a... uh, Yes, Virginia, There is a Santa Claus. Okay. I, th- I didn't know whether or not it said her last name, because I don't remember her last name. No, I, th- I think so, I remember it was just, yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. It was a really good, That's you a did such a good wonderful job. Wonderful play. I had so much fun with that. We did, uh, my my school and my class did a radio version of it, so there was no physical acting on the stage, and we did, like, sound props. Mm-hmm. Like, we just had microphones set up at a table, and we just, like... It was like really shoes cool for when see. someone yeah. was walking and shit like that. It was so much fun. And I was the narrator mm-hmm. slash paper editor mm-hmm. who was like the same guy. And it was so much fun. Mm-hmm. I had such a blast with that role because it was just big, long monologues all the time. And I got to use a fun That old timey. Yeah. It was really and good. And like, I had so much fun with that. And then that same year, I did, I did uh, Mr. Bennett from Pride and Prejudice. Yes! So that's like a oh, weird flip flop. <laughs> and that was, okay, <laughs> that, you were great. The woman. No, absolutely. I agree with you. I don't, what was her name? Yeah, you even know. I have to say it. Yes, the, the, uh, the girl who played, oh my gosh, what is her name? She's Lady Catherine <laughs> DeBeau. Lady Catherine DeBeau. Who played DeBeau. Lady Catherine I, just brought it. In her, like, one, two-minute scene, she brought it. I know. She she was absolutely the best. Mm-hmm. I will mm-hmm. not say her name due to privacy and, like, out of respect for her because she is wonderful and I miss her every day. Oh, she's, yeah. I haven't spoken to her for, like, two years yeah, and I miss her so much. But she owned that role mm-hmm. and she stole the show. She Every Dead. night, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. every night, no one could compare to that. That was wonderful, and she was just, she was just in the moment and just gave it her like all. Even though it was just like, like not that long on the stage, she just fucking put everything into that. No, she was great, and that was, and I mean, you guys are high schoolers, so I don't want to dunk on high schoolers, but like, no, you're fine. Well, she like. <laughs> She brought it in a way that, like, no one else but you was bringing it. I would also say that play was kind of drab because the play only it takes only place, place in, in the room. Bennett's living room. And all the yeah. cool shit that happens in Pride and Prejudice takes place everywhere else. And that is going to be our transition into the next part of this episode. Because, well, we have spent a lot of time talking about Dionysus and his many multitudes and how it's a real shame that we don't see those different facets of his personality beyond Party God expressed in pop culture. Anyway, let's we're talk gonna play, about Party God. We're going to play a game <laughs> called Would Dionysus Attend This Party? So we're going to do first on the list is actually going to be the Netherfield Ball from Pride and Prejudice, which is a great scene in the book. It's the scene where, you know, yeah, where Darcy and Lizzie dance, which, whoa, yeah, love it. It's also the scene where the Bennett's all straight up embarrass themselves. Like, it's the scene that makes Darcy be like, I have to get my friend away from these people because <laughs> I don't believe this woman actually loves him and her family are nonsense. Her sister's great. I love her. I hate her. I love her. It's hard for me. I have social anxiety. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. <laughs> it's not enough. I need to do some personal growth and take yeah. responsibility for the predators in the environment that I'm aware of and letting them go off and do it. There's, I love Pride and Prejudice. So in the Regency era, balls are a big deal because there is no Netflix. There is no switches. Yeah. There's no tech. Balls are a sm- but particularly they're a big deal for a very specific social class. Because you're a work for your commoner. You're not going to balls. You're working to not die this winter. Pretty much. But if you're, you know, of a 
middle to upper class like the Bennetts or the Darcys or the Bingleys. You get to go to balls and have fun and dance and drink and listen to music. But specifically, balls are for trying to pair couples up. This is the only opportunity they really have, like, people of, like, you know, different genders have to interact with. It's very heteronormative, right? So it's the, the girls can go yeah. hang out with the guys, and you really couldn't do that in other opportunities. Like, this is how you mingle, right? There's no, there's no gender. So it's a party. It's the biggest party of the Regency era. Like, the Netherfield Ball is the shit though like this is like netherfield has been let this is the nicest house the bingley's throw the best party like it's a rager for regency era standards which means the dancing that everybody does the music that kind of thing it's a party but would dionysus attend to this party this is a i enjoy the concept of this game Mm -hmm. so in uh Percy Jackson itself already kind of disproves. <laughs> I love. Go on, go on. No, tell me. I'm going to 100% say Dionysus would attend this, and this is outside of what I'm about to say, right? Dionysus would attend this party because, as you said, it's the biggest rager in the nicest house. Mm-hmm. Outright, Dionysus is going to be there because it's the biggest rager in the nicest house. You know he wants to trash that fucking. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but what I'm about to say, in The Last Olympian, mm-hmm. Dionysus pulls Percy off to the side mm-hmm. into a bar in Bumfuck, Texas. Oh, nowhere. that's right. Know. Yeah, okay. And he's like, he's my essence Pac-Man. is at every... He's playing Pac-Man, and he's like, my essence is at every party ever thrown during this time because of mm-hmm. the storm raging. It was hard to find a party, so I'm, I'm here. But a little bit of his essence will be at every party, depending on how much... Essence would be at his party is should be the question. Here. All right, so I guess here's here's how the much essence? is it a how much of Dionysus is at this party? <laughs> is it a little bit of Dionysus, or did he actually attend? I want to talk about real quick about how even in Percy Jackson, the only facet of Dionysus we see is party god. No, he comes up with madness. We see he does. Madness. He does mention madness with Chris That's Rodriguez right. and Battle of the Labyrinth. Ooh, he comes up with madness. Right. You because he threatens uh, he can't Percy drink with wine, it. wine, so that's why we don't see him with wine and grapes. Because but like he's I, punished. I was like, okay, I meant that because he was still like tending to the strawberries. They mentioned. I did forget because you okay because I have only read recently. I have been listening list, to yeah. all the books. I'm currently on Heroes of Olympus's The Lost Hero which is after Percy Jackson and the Olympians, and we will get to that. Yeah, we'll have to in, change my intro. Half, maybe two years. So, how much of Dionysus would be at the Netherfield Ball party? Honest, okay, here's... Portion, we'll have, but I don't we'll think s- he would, like, physically attend. So his, like, spirit would be there. Why, why do you think it's not enough to actually get him there? Actually? Actually? Yeah, he would attend. But that, that's, again, because it's the biggest fucking rager in the nicest house he mm-hmm. wants to trash the place as much as he can yeah. given the time period you know cuz like yeah the greeks got crazy with their parties <laughs> they didn't just they like I, like the greeks got crazy with their parties let's be real here mm-hmm. like everyone was fucking in every single room oh god okay doesn't yeah. matter guy well, girl like everyone like i mean he's also a fertility god we forgot to mention that so yeah so he does uh, show up to the night of football as a full Shows thing. Up to he dresses for the party. With Aphrodite. I was going to say. Because, <laughs> as you said, they're matchmaking mm-hmm. parties, really. So he's showing up with Aphrodite and being like, all right, what you think? And she's going to point out the two people, like, all right, we need to get those people drunk so that they could possibly hook up. And Dionysus <laughs> is like, I'm on it. And then he goes, spikes the punch bowl. All right, so we're, that's, I don't think it's going to get any better than that. Let's move on. I've got some <laughs> other parties we're going to talk about. Here are some other famous parties in pop culture. The Mad Hatter's Tea Party from Alice in Wonderland. A part of his spirit would show up. That, or he would be there because he's just like bros with the Mad Hatter. That makes sense. The madness thing, I feel like, would be very him. However, this particular party, very uh, a point we discover early on in that scene. There's no wine. Yeah, so he... The the March Hare offers Alice... Part of him would be there, but not all of it. Yeah, there's a whole interaction where the March Hare, like... Have some wine. And Alice looks around and she's like, I don't see any wine. And the March here's like, oh, there isn't any. <laughs> so, like, there's no wine at this party. There's no, I'm assuming there's no alcohol at this party, so. Yeah. So there's he, just mercury he's, everywhere. He's there in spirit and he's just vibing. But he's not, like, going to show up. Probably. Yeah, he's not going to show up because, like, yeah. as you said, there's no wine. That changed. And there's only, like, three people and then Alice shows up. And one of them's asleep, so. Yeah. 
And so I was like, this is kind of a lame party, but Mad Hatter's my bro. And I just going to show up to support that, him. But, it's know. like how you like, <laughs> he like sends him a text like, hey, bro, have a great party. And maybe he tweets about it. Like, yeah, my bro's throwing a party. I like support it, but I'm not going to show up to that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's, here's a party. The death day party from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. That old cultural folk story that has no author just exists in, in the zeitgeist. Davis, do you remember what the Death Day Party is? Because it's not, not in the movies. Yeah, it just gets no. gutted for yeah, the movie. Yeah, I never read the books. <laughs> so the de- I'm like, there's no shit like that in the movie. <laughs> yeah, they, they gut it. I've seen up to Order of the Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, they actually, so this doesn't even make it in the movie because it's useless. It's fine. So the Death Day Party is apparently ghosts. They don't celebrate their birthday, obviously. They celebrate their death day. So nearly headless Nick the ghost of the Gryffindor common room is having a death day party on Halloween. Cause I guess that's when he was beheaded and he does Harry a solid and helps get him out of trouble. And he's like, Hey Harry, will you come to my death day party and like talk me up to this guy who's in charge of this club that I like really want to join, but they won't let me in. If he finds out I'm friends with you, he might let me in. So Harry has to go to this party. He gets Ron and Hermione to come with him because you know, they're bros. So they skip the Halloween feast to go to this party, which I'm going to say right now, calling it Dionysus doesn't go to this party even in spirit and that is a pun for ghosts okay because <laughs> it is lighting it's it's intentionally drab i everyone is like super depressed and super down and the yeah, lighting no, is dark there's decorations as many suck. ghosts as there are there is no spirit there's no this spirit party, in this party you know no. all so the, f- the food is if all Dionysus bad. attended if if Dionysus attended that, that would be a rager because like let's be real here any party Ghost that party. Dionysus mm-hmm. even in spirit would be pretty sick because like I mean I would have a tea with the Mad Hatter let's yeah, be honest but yeah like if there's no spirit that party fucking sucks Dionysus ain't there the food is bad it's all rotting because like the ghost like will go through it and be like I can kind of maybe taste it since it's so rotten and pungent but it's like a bad party and you'd think a party full of ghosts on Halloween would be the best Halloween party ever but it's not so no Dionysus does not show up to this party. It's a bad party. <laughs> so here's here's what the good place is. And so we'll just, because I mentioned it. I wanted to do one of Tahani's parties. Because she mm. is the party queen. Yeah, she, she throws she, she, she the throws. best, perfect, exactly what the occasion called for kind of parties. But when I was doing some research to try to brush up on like what were some of Tahani's best parties, like just to remind myself, I haven't actually watched the last couple episodes, so I was afraid to. I, I was terrified of stumbling upon spoilers, so I uh ran away. I just stopped. No, I feel it. I haven't even. Yeah, I'm like halfway through season three, mm-hmm. maybe at the start of it. Nice, nice. So I'm like, yeah, this is fucking sick. It's so good. But I haven't been able to watch no, it's it so again. Good. It's so good. <laughs> I- Julio walked in on me on the twist. Well, he, like, sat down and started watching with me, like, two mm-hmm. episodes before it happened. Yeah, yeah. And we were like, holy shit! Yeah, oh, it's so good, yeah. <laughs> like, I did oh, not I see it coming I at my all. So Dude, that shit was so great. Good. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's on Netflix right now if you have Netflix. So I I think that Dionysus would definitely show up to Tahani's parties, especially when they're like, in the afterlife, because I think that is, like... Uh, I mean, he'd be there personally. Yeah, the personally. That's what I was going to say, because it fits in well with his whole also Bye. being, like, you know, going to the underworld. So that it's just convenient. Yeah. He's like, oh, good, there's some parties here. Oh, Thank fuck, God. Yeah, Hades go. can't throw a party. Oh, my God. <laughs> he can't throw a party H- to save Hades anybody's parties life. Hades parties suck. You see yeah. that Harry Potter party? You see that? Exactly <laughs> like it. I'm like, and... Oh, here's what... Here's what so Skylar helped me come up with a lot of these when we were brainstorming. Uh-huh. The parties from Great Gatsby. Another rage. I haven't... I haven't seen it, nor have I read it. But you so. know... You know the parties from... I know... I mean, like, 20s parties, you know, or whatever era party they are, and I know that aesthetic, so I know parties of that era. All right, so basically, here's the thing. You've got this guy, Gatsby, and he throws these massive, massive, huge, huge ragers, like, everybody comes. He's only throwing them because he's trying to get this girl's attention, like, she lives across the lake or some shit. I don't remember, but I do remember. Her name is Daisy. I did a bunch of research on this. I don't know why I'm pretending. So Daisy, he's trying to get her back. He lost his chance with her. He's new money. All of these parties symbolize the hollowness of the American dream. That's what the book is about. It's about how the American dream doesn't exist is a lie. Now, Didn't true, but also, F. Scott Fitzgerald kind of fucking sucked. So, like, I'm not going to agree with him on anything. <laughs> anyway, I, That's fair. I think, now we, we established that Dionysus would definitely show up in person to the Netherfield ball parties. 
I don't actually think he would show up to the Gatsby parties. Because even though they're big ragers, even though everybody comes and it's a huge thing, it's very like flamboyant, extravagant. I don't think anybody's having fun at those parties. Because like, they're being thrown constantly, right? Not even that. It's like Gatsby only throws them to try to get Daisy's attention. And I, I think she comes once and she doesn't even like the party because it's like, this is so over the top. Like, you're new money. I married into old money. Like, these are very different parties. They're all representatives of the hollowness of the American dream. Even his guests who are showing up, like, like the couples are bitchy to each other. It, it Just reading them, it sounds like, you know, it's the Gatsby party is the 1920s kind of vibe. I threw a 1920s themed birthday party this it year because it was 2020 you were there everyone dressed up it was fun they were not it was not a gatsby themed party it was just a 1920s party there was a difference <laughs> because the gatsby parties don't actually sound fun and i think like maybe a like a sliver of dionysus like essence is there because it is a party it is a big deal but i don't think he shows up because i think dionysus wants to go to parties where people are actually having a good time yeah that's my stance on that one uh- <laughs> When you said that he was thrown it to get a girl's attention, it reminded me of How I Met Your Mother. Very early in the series, Ted Mosby uh, is doing the exact same thing to try to, to get, get Robin. Robin in. Yeah, wow. Um, and he's Ted just sucks. constantly throwing parties. And it starts off pretty good, and it's just slowly like. Hey, this sucks, Ted. Dude, fucking. Now you only got like one thing of Frito dip in the. And your roommate needs to study like, for his, like, beer. law yeah, exam. Law. Like, stop it. I know, and he's just getting progressively angry. Ted is a selfish... And it's just... Ted's a very selfish... Ted's a, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see. I will agree that he gets better over the series, but... I think he, like, varies. He's still pretty selfish. Yeah. He's still pretty selfish. All of them end up in the bad place, except for Marshall. Marshall... Uh, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Marshall just fucking Marshall's is great. there. And Lily is there because she is just Marshall's soulmate. That's a good point. That's a good point. Okay, so you you want to do Project X. I do. I have never I seen this movie, so tell me about it. Tell me about whether or not Dionysus is, shows up. Dionysus is there, but not at the start. Okay. <laughs> so here's the, like, uh, for those of you who haven't seen the movie, it's a good movie with, like, a question mark because, honestly, <laughs> it's... It's it's a found footage style movie. Oh, I didn't so know that. It, okay. I no, I absolutely love those kinds of movies, and so, like one of my favorites is called Chronicle. And that's about like three kids get superpowers. Super fun, just a good time all around, and I like it a lot. But Project X, I want to say, but it, like it starts off the nerd group, like the dork, not even the nerd group, the dork group, trying to throw a party, mm-hmm. right? And they're just, like, deceived, like, it's like, they're gonna throw it at their friend's house, who's kind of, like, doesn't want to do it, because his parents are a little strict, but are also kind of cool, you know? They're like, yeah, we're gonna have a few friends over, and like, okay, we'll have a good time. And it starts off, and, like, nobody shows up for the first hour, and then people start showing up, and then you hear that people shared it on Facebook, uh, shared it on Craigslist. <laughs> The radio station was talking about it. Just an open invite to fucking anyone in the county. Uh And suddenly, on this half-acre lot, you got it slam-packed with people. Well, maybe it's like a full acre because, like, they got a pool and a side garage. So it's like like upper-middle-class house, you know? Two-story side garage with the dad's project car, which is like a fucking 60s Mustang. Shit just gets way out of control. Mm-hmm. There's cocaine, there's weed, there's fucking just constantly... Like, there's a bounce castle of just topless girls. Ow, that'd be so uncomfortable. I know, like, but like, but it's just a fucking... It, it's an absolute rager of a party. You think the craziest party you've ever seen in, like, those American Pie fucking... Like, in those kind of movies... That's your point of reference. Times it by, like, ten. I mean, like, like let's be real. Like, you think of a college movie frat house party and you just times that by 10 it is an absolute fucking rage of a party and Dionysus is the one who drove the dad's car into the pool <laughs> <laughs> alright that be him personally in the form of a rowdy teen absolutely yeah Dionysus is the one that like posted the ads oh absolutely like, Dionysus I think Dionysus like, made that once party it started, happen it, <laughs> once it started Dionysus spread his influence yep, yep, all Dionysus over the place, made that party just, happen Got out of control because Dionysus. <laughs> because Dionysus. Perfect. All right. I've got one more that I want to talk about. It is a bit off the cuff, or that's probably not the right phrasing. It's weird. It's not what you expect. So, we, I want to talk about the song Dead Man's Party by Oingo Boingo. I don't think I've ever heard of it. Let me go ahead and pull it up. 
I'm doing it now. Yep, yep. I think Dionysus is at this party just from the two seconds I've seen. Just it. the instant. <laughs> yeah. I just saw like people fucking vibing and having a good time and dancing and shit. Oh yeah, he's at that party. That's great. I'm not even talking about the music video, like just the song. I think so. Yeah, I, th- I would say Dionysus is at this party after reading the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the lyrics, one like the very first ones are, "I'm all dressed up with nowhere to go, walking with a dead man over my shoulder." I'm all dressed up with nowhere to go, walking with a dead man over my shoulder. But the one I think is definitely here's what I think. This guy's dead, right? That's what like, it he's sounds the de- like. He got, yeah, he got. It says he got struck by lightning. I was struck by by lightning walking down the street. I was hit by something last night in my sleep. It's a dead man's party. Who could ask for more? Everybody's coming. Leave your body at the door. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. If, like, he's dead, Dionysus intercepted him from Thanos. Oh, like, you're coming to this party. Yeah. No, I love that. I I think it also, like, I think this one particularly, like, in addition to being a party, and it sounds like a wild-ass party, also matches with Dionysus' whole descent into the underworld and that, that cycle of immortality and rebirth. Like, yeah. he dies. But he's still got a party. And so he's got Danny Elfman there gonna definitely yeah, sing fucking... and serenade for this party. By the way, yeah, Danny absolutely. Elfman was the just singer of Oingo Boingo for the song, also the singer for Jack Skellington. So, Woo. that's the parties. Yeah, he's at that party. He's definitely at that party. You know, DJ, I think, though we did talk about Dionysus as a party god, we also tied into his many layers as to why he would or would not attend these parties. So I think we did good. Yeah. Awesome. All right, listeners, hey, if you think we did good, please share the podcast with a friend. Maybe share it with the theater kid in your life. Share it with the wine aunt in your life. Do you want to have a conversation (laughs) with DJ about wine? Yeah. Do that too. Share it. <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let y'all know. I'm perfect consumer. I like anything. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> please. Again, the podcast is new, and it is honestly just DJ and I running this thing. So if you like the show, it would mean so very much to us if you would just tell somebody about it. Send them the link to yeah. our website, which is Podcast of Poseidon. That is Poseidon. P O S E I D O N. And we'd love to just have more people. Come hang out and share the pop culture references that we don't find. I'm sure there are other places Dionysus has showed up and perhaps even showed up as like his theater god persona. We just don't know about it. So if you do, if it's in like a manga or a webcomic that we've never heard of or some YA story, maybe some pulp horror from the 80s. Like, (laughs) yeah. Just, yeah, just send it to us, dude. Let, we'll let us read know. it. We'll, we'll look into yeah, it. Yeah, our email is poseidonpod at gmail.com. Send that to us. And thank you all for listening. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been fun. I hope your next party is fun. And, well, you know, it's COVID. So maybe just drink some wine if you're into that. If you're if you're going to have a Halloween party, stay safe. Davis, this episode but is going to come out in December. Right. In, like, November. You're correct. <laughs> I forgot. Nobody's having Halloween parties. We're just going to make caramel apples and dress in costumes. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> bye, everybody. And until next time, don't be like Zeus. Don't be like Zeus. Podcast of Poseidon is created, produced, and hosted by Darian and DJ Smart. It's edited by Darian Smart. Our music is Athens Festival by Martin Hain. Our cover art is by Audrey Miller. Find her on Instagram at Bombshell Nutshell Art. Coming out with us on Instagram and Twitter at Podcast of Poseidon. Find all our episodes and episode transcripts at podcastofposeidon.com. Thanks for listening.